When you want to get to know someone and you've never met them before, what do you do? Well, I don't know about you, but I hold out my hand and I say, hello, my name is Bill. What's your name? Of course, in this pandemic, maybe I'm like, hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? <laughs> but this is how we make an introduction. And this is how we begin a conversation where we might actually get to know someone. And that's why we're asking this question. What is God's name? Now, that may sound very weird because isn't God's name God? Well, absolutely not. Because if that were the case, it would be like saying to me, hey, human, how you doing, human? Uh, your name's human, right? Hey, human, don't talk too long. I might get bored. My name's actually Bill. I have a very specific name and a specific identity. And names are a very, very big deal in the Bible. And there's a moment in the book of Exodus where God announces his name. See, he was actually pretty good friends with a man named Moses. And in Exodus 33, Moses, who often met with God already, said, God, show me your glory. And he invites him to come up on a mountain. And in Exodus 34, what we see happens next is knee buckling. It is dramatic and it is jarring. And it's a passage that we must look to today and understand more about who this God is. Here's what it says in Exodus 34. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshiped. God has, his, has a name, and his name is Yahweh. That's his name. It's actually four Hebrew consonants, Yod, He, Vav, He. The ancient Hebrew language had no vowels originally, and then a group of people called the Masoretes came and added markings around those consonants, uh, taking from the oral history of the language to help people understand how to pronounce the name. But here's what's interesting. Hebrews were so afraid to misuse the name of God, which would be uh, breaking one of the Ten Commandments, so they never actually said Yahweh out loud. They would instead use a word called Adonai, which means the Lord, which is really unfortunate because though that may have worked for them, here in modern day America, when we refer to God as the Lord, it's almost like using a title, like he's the manager or he is in charge. It's not personal. But as we learn right here from this passage in Exodus 34, God is very personal. He has identified himself very specifically. He reaches out to you and he says, Hey you, my name is Yahweh. And I'm different than any other God. I am above all other gods. I am compassionate. I am gracious. I am faithful. I am not angry. And I am just. That's what he says about himself. He places himself different than any other gods. And this is what's interesting about this. Because of how he specifically and personally identifies himself, it, it begs to question, wait, so does that mean there are other gods? And I've always operated under this understanding, eh, not really. I mean, there's only one true God, but let's hold our horses for just a moment because I think there are two mistakes we make here in modern day America. First, we overgeneralize God, Yahweh, and then also we overfictionalize God's little g. By overgeneralizing God, we can just say, well, I think there's a God and we don't know a whole lot about him. I mean, who can really know him? So we can actually, with all of that blank canvas that is God, we can shape God into our image or into whatever image we want him to be. But then we overfictionalize God's little g. And we, we fail to remember and realize that there really is an enemy who wishes for us to worship him and follow him and do life his way instead of God's way. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. See, there is an enemy. And there's an evil presence out there, and it's clamoring for us to do life that way instead of Yahweh's way. We need to wake up and understand that there is only one true God, and He is above 
all beings. He has created the entire universe, including you and including me. And he is Yahweh. And he's different. He's the compassionate and gracious God who is slow to anger, who is forgiving, but yet also just. God wants you to know him, and he wants you to know what sets him apart from any other God. And actually, he wants an eternal relationship with you. And that's why I'm offering you this next step to consider today, and that is this. Make Yahweh your God above all other gods today. Are we going to worship this God, Yahweh, the one true God. We're going to make him our one and only God, or we're going to continue to chase after other gods in this world in which we live, or we're going to continue to follow the chaos of this world. Well, but maybe this is how I live, or maybe this is what I live for, or maybe this is the focus of my life. No, no, we worship the one true God, Yahweh, who put on human flesh and dwelt among us, becoming another manifestation of, of himself, known as God the Son, Jesus Christ. And he allowed himself to die on that cross for us, so that whoever would believe in him would not die, but live forever in a relationship with him. That's Yahweh. And he's offering you to enter into eternal life with him, to enter into a relationship with him. He wants you to know who he is and what sets him apart from all other gods so that you can respond the same way Moses did. And that is this, to bow down and worship him. It's a choice. And you have a crossroads right now in your life spiritually. Will you make Yahweh your God above all other gods right here, right now? If so, I invite you to just simply pray and say, okay, God, Yahweh, I'm making you my one true God. I believe in you. I trust in you. Please forgive me of my sins. I need your compassion. I need your grace. And the Bible says, if you ask him for that, he forgives you of all your sins. He adopts you into his family and you become his child forever. That's Yahweh. Will you make him your one true God today?